The double slit experiment provides important information about the motion of light in the universe. The majority of scientists think that it demonstrates that light is simultaneously a particle and a wave. That being said, there are alternative explanations for what is occurring in the experiment. Here I will discuss two previously proposed explanations. In addition, I'll give you my explanation, which is probably going to be among the strangest things you've ever heard. The double slit experiment operates as follows. Two small slits in a barrier are the target of a beam of light. A detector is struck by light that enters through the slits and exits on the opposite side. Film or an electronic camera can be used as the detector. The light creates the following pattern. There are bands that resemble the sideways oriented rungs of a ladder. The brightest are those in the middle, and as they move away from it, they become dimmer. This result wasn't anticipated. It was more logical to think that there would be either two bands exactly behind each slit, or there would be a fuzzy region where light was evenly distributed across the film. However, neither occurred. So why do bands emerge? I will talk about three distinct concepts. One is the Copenhagen interpretation, another the pilot wave theory, and the third, which is exclusive to me, is what I refer to as the creator path interpretation. Regarding my idea, yes, you can set your speed dial for the nut house. According to the Copenhagen interpretation, bands form as a result of light traveling through the slits and waves. The waves from the two slits either add together when they are in phase or subtract when they are out of phase. The light has a high chance of striking the film when the waves are in phase and a low chance of hitting it when they are out of phase. As a result, light begins as particles, moves as waves through the slits, and then returns to particles when they strike the detector. The interpretation, which holds that light is both a particle and wave, has recently been reinforced by additional experiments. For instance, one photon at a time was shot through the slits. Every time one struck the detector at a particular location, it was recorded. Once thousands of individual photons pass through, they form the same band pattern. This indicated that each photon passed through both slits simultaneously as a wave and interfered with itself. This provided more evidence for light's particle wave nature. However, there is another explanation for the outcomes. Louis de Broglie put forth the pilot wave theory in 1927. According to him, light is a particle driven by a mathematical wave function along a predefined path. As a result, the particle only passes through one of the two slits, while the guiding wave function considers both. Thus, a large number of photon paths will form the wave function's band pattern. This theory is supported by another system in which an oil droplet follows a guiding wave and exhibits behaviors that were previously only thought to be associated with quantum particles like photons. The creator path interpretation that I'm putting forth here is similar to the pilot wave theory. However, it proposes that the photon travels along a path determined by the creator. Indeed, God is the one who controls the photon's path to the detector. According to this interpretation, the pattern of bands is evidence of God's handiwork. The creator either controls each photon in real time or incorporated the information into a hidden variable. Currently, there is no experiment that can distinguish between these three interpretations. And I agree that scientists will find the creator path theory to be irritating. They would rather the universe be random, as in the Copenhagen interpretation, or predetermined, as in the pilot wave theory. They find it offensive to consider that the universe has meaning and purpose, as in the creator wave theory. I agree that there are a lot of implications for this idea. 
If God is the one who moves all the photons in the universe, then it implies, among other things, that he is the ultimate source of evil. Although I don't think this is so, I'll have to address it in a later video. Moreover, it is possible that the creator wave theory discards quantum mechanics. Still, statistically speaking, quantum mechanics is a good way to guess what God will do next. There are those who would argue that it is ludicrous for God to track every photon in the universe. It would mean that God is monitoring about 10 to the 69 photon movements per second. If the sun emits 10 to the 45 photons per second, and the universe contains 10 to the 24 stars. In addition to that, he has spent 14 billion years doing this. I agree that it sounds crazy, but it's pretty amazing if he's doing it all just for you. Click the thumbs up icon if you like this video. Also leave your comments and questions below. Until next time, remember, humility, thanks, and joy.